Thank you for staying with us. You're still on The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Right now, it's time for a hot topic, and we're looking at the consequences of government debt. Well, joining us to make sense of all of this is Mohamed Abdullahi, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Mr. Mohamed. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Nigerians. Always my pleasure. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we're talking about the consequences of government debt. Now, we know that Nigeria is in debt. Most times we keep borrowing to service um, the things that we say we need. Um, sometimes we borrow to even buy 160 million Nara SUVs. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you had to bring that. Well, I, had, I just had to. Um, we, we borrow to... Um, you know, have like good road transport, we borrow for a lot of things. Now, servicing these debts is another thing. But I just want you to walk us through um, why we borrow and the consequences of borrowing. Um, borrowing itself is not, uh, it's not like, I always say, like the very big deal. I mean, it's, it's even, even the biggest economies, the, the, the U.S. actually uh, yes. the biggest borrower. I mean, if you look at the statistics, uh, they, hold, they, they owe a, a large chunk uh, of, of uh, monies to uh, externally and internally. But you want to ask yourself, if you compare it to a kind of society, uh, what do we borrow to do? I think that is the uh, most important thing. Mm. Yes, uh, like I said earlier, large economies actually borrow as well but the difference between these developed economics and ours is the fact that um, they borrow to uh, you know to, to to finance capital projects to finance infrastructure to finance things that will have uh, that will be of relevance I mean to the larger populace but in our own case is the other way around uh, I was um, listening to the news yesterday or watching the news yesterday and it is astonishing that, uh, I mean, the National Debt Office is saying we owe both internally and externally about $87 trillion. Mm. Uh, that's in it, that in itself is not a bad omen. But you look at um, what were these monies, uh, I mean, these monies that were borrowed, what were the capital projects that were done, are they still viable, are people using it, and then how do we repay? It means it's very much possible for us to repay these uh, loans. But in a case where we are borrowing to finance consumption, we are borrowing, like you rightly mentioned, to finance uh, luxuries like SUVs. Uh, we are borrowing to finance uh, luxuries like the presidential yacht and so on and so forth. Then it calls to uh, a lot of questions uh, because that in itself does not give any guarantee that we'll be able to pay because this like this these are expenditures. Mm. Uh, in, in fact, more financing to maintain them rather than uh, you know generate profits from them. So these are some these are the biggest challenges that we have in this part of the world. Most of our borrowings are things we are, are meant for financing our luxuries. You know, it's, 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 it's so shocking, seriously, because I think at this juncture and at this kind of time, uh, we are supposed to have uh, gone past uh, this, this kind of thinking. I, I was really disappointed in the new government. I, I, I must be very frank with Nigerians. Uh, you know, there are so many uh, things that the new government have initiated that I felt are not right. For instance, if, if, if a new government is coming and it's, you know, removing subsidy, telling Nigerians to tighten their belt and so on and so forth. And then, boom, um, the, the president goes ahead and appoints 50 ministers, for God's sake, 50, even surpassing uh, that, that of uh, the, the former president, Buhari. You know, how do you finance this put increased cost of governance when you are telling Nigerians to, <clears throat> you know, tighten their belt? When we all know that uh, we have challenges, uh, you know. Uh, again, issue of COP28 as well, mm -hmm. where the mm -hmm. federal government is saying they had, so we had more than a thousand delegation, but the government said, okay, the only federal government 
specifically said they sponsored about 140 something that's still very many uh, you know so you still you you have a lot of things that is going on that is not right because these monies are not even there we are borrowing for instance perhaps we'll go to the question later even our budget mm -hmm. we are budgeting 33 b for 200 you know poverty streaking because if you divide 333 billion by 200 plus million people you have less than 200 dollars for a year to spend as a nigerian yeah but to shock you at least 10 10 billion dollars of that 33 billion will be borrowed by the federal government but again you have in this budget a lot of frivolities you know 15 billion naira to be used to to, to build uh, a new government lodge for the vice president and so on and so forth the national assembly is there adamant in spending 57.6 billion in buying luxury vehicles for a budget that you'll be borrowing at least uh 30 percent of that you know so these are, these are these are the things that we need to correct but it seems we are not ready to learn our lessons we are ready to keep indulging in this uh, attitude of uh, borrowing just to finance our luxuries and keep impoverishing uh, the, the nation mm. so it's 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 really heart heartbreaking all right, so you, you, you highlighted capital um, projects. Now, in Bauchi State, uh, the court has ordered a contractor to seize um, 62.5 million worth of properties from the state because the state is owing this contractor. So we're talking about capital projects that we are not even doing. There are not, there's nothing. There's nothing, no roads, no um, infrastructure. But then we're still borrowing. We're still borrowing so much. And we can't really see what they're using these monies for. Shouldn't we be asking this government why, um, why they're not as transparent as we would want them to be? And why can't we see what our monies are being used for? And you know, we need as a, a people no, to, so, so, just, just a moment as you answer that, we need as a people to know really the consequences of this borrowing. Because once we begin to know uh, that this is what is going to cost us as a people, maybe we'll start to ask the relevant questions that we need to ask and take more proactive actions. So what are these consequences of these borrowings that we keep doing without the infrastructure, right, like, like Rume is saying, on not just the economy but on the people of Nigeria? The, co the consequences are numerous. Uh, first and foremost, you and I are indebted, perhaps... <laughs> As, as Nigerians, we are indebted to external bodies, whether it's the IMF, the World Bank, and so many, uh, the, the, uh, yeah, you know, and so many international bodies. Uh, even though you and I perhaps have not seen a Kobo, uh, you provide your own security, you provide your own water, you provide your own electricity as a Nigerian, and so on and so forth. But again, you are indebted. Uh, at the last count, uh, perhaps I can't really recollect, but I know at the last count uh, it said that. Perhaps uh, every Nigerian uh, owes all these international bodies, perhaps to the to the tune of uh, three, four, five thousand, six thousand dollars, and so on. I'm not. I might not be very correct. You know, I can't really recollect. But you know, it is in that. It is in that range. So, and 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 like I earlier mentioned, you as an individual provide almost everything for yourself. Security. I'm sure wherever you live. You pay people to secure your gate. Yeah. You know, you, you dig your own. I mean, you provide your own water by, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by you know, buying generators and so on and so forth. You know, you grade your own roads. I mean, within your estate and your various streets and so on and so forth. So, you know, what are then, what is then government borrowing to finance? You begin to question. But we mentioned earlier, we said majority of our borrowings are going into you know, luxuries that service just the very few in government. So that is, is that, that, that's, that, that's the consequences. So we need to, as a people, uh, continue to talk. I think that's the best we can do. We can't take up arms, but we need, as a people, to continue to highlight this to the relevant uh, authorities. But mind you, again, people are actually doing quite a lot. You know, if, if, you, if, if you look at some of the things that private entities and then lobbyists are doing, for instance, I don't know if I could mention them, but I know of a tracker NG in Nigeria, you know, uh, who, that, that, that breaks down the budgets of Nigeria every year. They follow to the latter each money that has been, you know, allocated for each project. But I tell you, this is December 29th, 2023. 
you go to see various things highlighted in Nigeria's budget in 2022, just two days to the end of the year, a lot of those things have not been done. Monies have been allocated. People have taken the money and nothing. And nothing has been done. You know, a lot of time, just follow Tracker on social media. You'll be amazed at what, you know, you, the, the, the so-called perhaps elites and people in government are doing to this country. You see a lot of projects highlighted. I was I, I, I was on their page yesterday, and I see a lot of things, projects in Delta State, projects that are supposed to be done in schools, and so on and so forth. A lot have not been done, and money has been dispensed. You know, so what is ICPC doing? What is uh, EFCC doing? Private entities are going deeper to bring these things to the fore. So it's, it's and uh, like we said, monies are borrowed actually to finance this budget. Yet, people take this money, they don't even project it. At best, people do shoddy jobs. Perhaps jobs that are meant for 200 million are just done perhaps 50 million or even less, and then the rest uh, is, 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 is looted. So we need to continue to talk. And people, Nigerians, at, at, at best, are doing their very best. You know, like I said, a lot of initiatives are out there trying to bring this thing to the fore. But uh, it behoves on our government to carry out action as soon as possible. And if, if you, you also mentioned Bauchi, if you want, if you, yes, if, if, if you want me to chip into that. Yes. I, I think Bauchi is, is like we always have in this part of the world. There is no continuity in government. That project that was done in Bauchi was in since was since 2009, 2009. How many years ago now? That was that's like I think 14 years or so ago. And the then governor was even Isa Yuguda, not the present government. But again, the, the the project was done, delivered. A letter of commendation was signed by the relevant government agency to say yes, you have delivered this project. So what is stopping the payment 14, 14 yes, years ago? Later, yeah. Since 14 years ago. Those are the challenges again that we find. So perhaps this present government is thinking, oh, we're not the one that signed up this project. We're not the one that delivered this project. So why should we pay? But government is in continuity. And this is some of the things that we lack in this part of the world. You know, you find so many abandoned projects here and there. Uh, perhaps, you know, we keep rebudgeting and rebudgeting for things that have been budgeted for in the past. Mm. This present administration will do, uh, maybe won't complete it. The next administration will come. But then for the same thing for the next eight years, and then we keep rigmaroling on the same spot. It's uh, our kind of governance is very funny here, yeah. seriously. Mm -hmm. So where do we go from here? Um, what are the things that we can do, even um, the citizens of Nigeria, to ensure that we are not borrowing? Because if you're telling me that, as I'm here, I probably own oh about six thousand dollars. Where am I going to walk That's all about of that six money? Million. Yes, where am I going to walk all of that money to pay? So as a Nigerian, I'm already indebted without me even trying to get money, because I did not spend that money. But yes, I'm indebted. So what can we do as Nigerians right now to ensure that our government is not borrowing as much? And even if they are, since they say borrowing is not such a bad thing, as long as you're using it um, for the economy, for the economy to flourish, what can we do to ensure that our government is borrowing for the right reasons and then not borrowing for frivolities? Yes, I think there must be check and balances. And then even though um, citizens like you and I have a little to do, but we still have actually a lot to also contribute. For instance, I know uh, in Kaduna State, in the first dispensation of the last uh, presidency, uh, you know, I know uh, citizens rallied, you know, their, their, their representatives and senators at the National Assembly to stop the former uh, governor of uh, Kaduna State, uh, Malam el from taking a World Bank loan. In fact, mm -hmm. if you look at the statistics, aside Lagos, Kaduna is the second most indebted state in Nigeria. So the then senators, which caused a lot of brouhaha between the senators and the governor then, you know, said, we are just taking a lot of these loans. What are we actually doing with them? If there is no capital project that will, you know, impact the life of Kaduna citizens, we shouldn't be doing this. And then they blockade the, the loan based on, you know, feedback from their respective constituencies. I think this is what we should do a lot more. I'm not saying you can't take loans, but please, there must be a blueprint to say this is what we are doing. Perhaps the loans should even be channeled directly, not money paid into governance, into, into government uh, the loans, I mean, 
if they are to be taken, should be paid directly into the coffers of the project to be delivered. You know, and then there are modalities to say by this, by doing this and doing that, we'll be paying back and so on and so forth. So Nigerians like you, yourself and myself have a lot to do. We need to continue to talk. We need to liaise more with our representative at the national level because they are the ones that need to check the excesses and balance the excesses of, you know, the executive, whether they are governors or even the president and so on and so forth. So we need to do more. We need to bring to fore to keep talking and, 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 and to keep advising, to keep writing letters or keep visiting our, 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 the, our representatives at the National Assembly, at the State Assembly, to tell them what needed to be done. I know some of the, uh, maybe quite not all, but uh, I know many of the National Assembly members, you know, have what they call uh, a town hall meeting with their constituents perhaps every quarter or at least once in a year, at worst, you know. So we should take opportunities of uh, this kind of forum or this kind of forum to, 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 to pour out our mind, to tell, you know, our because they are representatives, you know. They should be there to do our bidding, even though it's not always the, the, the thing. But at least we should do our own best in making sure that we tell them where we feel things are going right or where we feel things are going wrong so that there, there should be or there could be a kind of amendment on their own part. Uh, well, um, let me speak like a lawyer now. I put it to you that those town hall meetings are not for mm. the people because you get to a town hall meeting as an ordinary man. If you are even allowed to enter the, the hall, or wherever they're having this meeting, you will never have the to microphone speak. Yes. to speak. It's a selected few that will speak, and they are given questions to, to ask and all that. So it's never, a re uh, never really something that the people contribute to. But like you said, uh, we'll still uh, keep Try crashing the mm -hmm. party and mm -hmm. making sure that we say what we need to say. But in, in closing, let, let's just pick your uh, mind on... Um, on an issue that a lot of people are not comfortable with. Some are comfortable, some are not. The issue of uh, external lending bodies. You just made mention of the fact that when you're going to take a loan, you need to have a blueprint uh, with which you, you can tell the people giving you the loans how you're going to pay back. It doesn't seem as if Nigeria has this kind of blueprint. All the time they go cap in hand to the IMF, for instance. But mm -hmm. IMF keeps giving us these loans mm -hmm. that they know very well that most times the politicians just use it to, to finance their, their, their luxuries and all that. So do you think IMF is playing a good role in, uh, in growing our economy or um, our relationship with the IMF is more detrimental than beneficial? A personal opinion, please. Yes. You, you remember this, this adage that uh, whoever... Uh, the, uh, pays the piper, the, the take the tune, the tune you know. Right. So it's, it's like that. You know, the IMF and other international lending bodies, they have their own strategy as well. So before even giving you the loan, even if they know, I'm just let's just assume, they know that you are not using that loan for what is meant for, they already give you some kind of policies and principles for you to do. For instance, devaluation of currency, yes. You know, for instance, they tell you, you must do this this way. You must do that that way. And because you just want to get this loan, you go to do it, even though it's at the detriment of your citizen. We've seen countless, you know, situations like that. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, two weeks ago, the World Bank was advising Nigerian government to hike the, the price of uh, 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 petrol again. Yes. I'm sure you must have seen that. Yes. yes. Hello, sir. Are you there? Oh, I think we just oh, lost, we his, lost audio. his audio. There. Yes, um, but yes, I, yes, I mean, um, that, okay, the, okay. The, that was go on. Your audio is breaking, but if you are able to come back, just wrap it up uh, with what you're saying. Okay, mm -hmm. we, we, lost we'll, we lost the audio. Hello? Okay. Yes, just wrap it up. Yes, uh, I'm saying, just two weeks ago, the, the World Bank was advising Nigerian government to sell. You know, so uh, PMS and the prices, yeah. per liter. Mm. Some of the things they meddle into the uh, internal affairs of these countries that they give loan, mm. and because but perhaps the African, the African, uh, uh, 
uh, what they call the African leaders are so insensitive as well to the plight of their citizens. They go cap in hand, accept all these stringent policies at the detriment of their citizens just because they want to get this loan. And they get this loan, like you rightly mentioned, they, you know, they, they, they indulge most of it into their uh, frivolities and luxuries at the expense of the citizens. And then the citizens are left, you know, to pay back perhaps in 20, 30, 40 years' time or so on and so forth. You know, so it's, it's quite challenging. I'm sure your question, to answer your question directly, these international bodies are also not helping the situation. Uh, and you, you wouldn't want to blame them because it is our leaders who are selling the citizens and the countries to them at a very cheap and a very, very cheap rate. So mm. we need to rethink. Okay. Okay. Well, I hope that that is done because I don't want to be owing six thousand. That that's all that's ringing in my head. I don't want to be owing six thousand dollars that I have to pay. And if we keep, you know, getting these loans, mm -hmm. it's it's it will increase. Mm -hmm. And in a few years, you'll hear that every Nigerian is owing about ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars. Well, so I, I just leave and go to that country. Mm, and stay. I just hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> but yes, we want to thank you for coming um, and speaking to us. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next year. Hey Amen. Thank, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank yes, thank you. All right, we've been speaking to Mohammed Abdullah. He is a public affairs analyst, and we've been talking about the consequences on government debt. But yes, we'll go on a quick break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us.